Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. Now, this video is going to be slightly different. Um, I haven't actually released a video in um, over a week now because I've actually been away at a funeral in a place called Ashcroft. Now, if any of you know where um, Kamloops is, it's a place in BC, uh, about in the center of British Columbia, um, and it's in Canada. Um, and beside it, there's a small town called Ashcroft, and that's where my grandfather lived. So I was going through all of his stuff and found all sorts of useful stuff, which I'm going to show you about. Um, I also went up to uh, Kamloops Lake, which is a lake near Kamloops, and I got some pretty interesting minerals from an old mine up there, um, and all sorts of different stuff. And I know you guys have been requesting a periodic table update, um, so I'm going to show you uh, what I'm on my periodic table currently. So we start over this end, and I just have some wild onions, which I uh, got from the river, and I'm going to be planting these and see how they do. Got some uh, baking sheets, which I'm going to be using to bake things in the oven when I need to do that with chemistry. And in my grandfather's basement, um, piled under a bunch of dirt, um, in a back corner, I found this really old book called Uses of Science. Um, and my dad used to go to a school called Ashcroft Elementary School. He took this book out and never returned it from the library. It was printed in 1951. So uh, that's pretty interesting. It stayed in such good condition because it's really dry up there. Um, Ashcroft is actually a desert. Um, anyhow, here's my dad's old uh, potato cannon. Made out of a bunch of uh, Coca-Cola cans. I don't know if you can see right there. This is cola. He painted over it. Um, and I really like this idea of using cans. So I think in a future video I will show how to make like a potato cannon out of soup cans and stuff. Um, and yeah, I got a bag of old light bulbs and stuff. I'll be removing argon from them. Um, and I'll do be doing a video on that. This soy sauce here, my great-grandfather made. And it is from 1952, 64 years old. And this is like the real stuff, homemade soy sauce. Anyhow, then here is um, some alcohol. It's 50% concentration here. Um, and there's just activated charcoal at the bottom. Now, my grandfather used to love to make moonshine and stuff. So he had like huge amounts of alcohol, just bottles and bottles. So with this stuff, I'm going to be concentrating it to a higher purity, closer to 100%. So we can use it as a solvent. Um, anyhow, so now here's a couple different chemicals I got. So I had a bunch of bone meal, so I grabbed some bone meal. It's just in this uh, thing here. Um, and bone meal uh, has a lot of phosphorus in it. So I'm hoping that we'll be able to extract uh, phosphorus from the bone meal. I don't know how that's going to turn out, but we'll see in the future. I also got this urea. Um, it's used a lot in chemistry, so uh, this was just a fertilizer. So I just grabbed a bunch of that. Um, and I'll probably find a use for it in the future. Now, that is calcium nitrate. I don't know where he got this from, but it was in his basement. And this can be used to make nitric acid. Um, similar to my calcium ammonium nitrate, which I got from the store, I, I do show how to make nitric acid from that in a separate video. You would basically follow the same steps, except with this. Anyhow, so I'll be using that to make nitric acid. Back here, I just have some plexiglass. That's always really useful. And then some tubing. Now, uh, I found this bar of paraffin wax, and I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that, but... Um, I know you can melt it down and use it as like um, an oil based uh, heating um, thing to heat round bottom flasks and whatnot. And mineral oil works, but I think this might have a higher uh, boiling point, so I'll be trying that probably. This is just a bag of old fuses and stuff. Um, now they just screw into light bulb sockets, so I'm thinking I'll be able to break the glass off and mess around with them and, and use them for something, so I save those. Now, here we go with the interesting. Um, stuff from the mine that I went to. So, Kamloops Lake is a large lake along the Thompson River near Kamloops. So it was like a two hour drive um, to get into this place. It was an hour drive up to Kamloops and then you go along a road called S Sabitan Creek Road, I believe. And it's an old dirt road, logging road, and it brings you out to this mine called uh, Copper Creek Mine. Um, now, they used to mine cinnabar there. If any of you guys know what cinnabar is, it's a compound of mercury. It's mercury sulfide. So one mercury atom and one sulfur atom. So inside this bag, I have uh, quite a bit of rock. Now I am going to do a video on extracting um, mercury from the cinnabar, but you can see the beautiful red color of the cinnabar, which is coating all over it. Um, so anyhow, if you guys ever get a chance to go over to Kamloops, or any of you know where Kamloops is, or I even suggest you Google it, um, you should drive out there along the road. It's called Sabitan Creek Road. It's about 26 kilometers in from the main highway. It's along uh, the Trans-Canada Highway, which is Highway 1. And it is really pretty. There's all sorts of different colors of rocks and stuff. And you can get yourself some cinnabar and extract mercury from it. 
So I'll be doing that in a future video. Now, the other thing which was down in the exact same mine was... Now, the camera doesn't pick it up that well, but this is actually quite green. Um, like, you can see it in the cliffs, it's beautiful green sand. And I'm assuming that this is either a compound of copper, um, chromium, or iron. And I'm not totally sure what it is, I just know it's not water-soluble. So, we're going to be trying to extract something from this in the future, so uh, that should be pretty interesting. You have lots of that to play around with. Now, this is um, one of my f most favorite things that I got from that trip. I actually, on the way over to Ashcroft, um, I live on Vancouver Island, so we had to take a ferry across to the mainland. But on my way over, um, we stopped in at a place called Surrey, which is a small little town. Now, there's a pottery supply place called Green Barn Pottery Supplies. And I bought a couple of things off of them, which will be super useful. This is just some uh, soft brick here. It's rated for 2,300 degrees Fahrenheit, I believe. Um, I don't, I can't remember what that is in Celsius. I just, that's what they told me it was rated for. And uh, it's really good at insulating. And I've seen people use this in different videos for arc furnace crucibles. So I grabbed two bricks here, and um, I will be making an arc furnace out of this. Um, or at least a crucible for my work furnace out of this, and uh, then I'll be able to melt all sorts of things. Because the current bricks I have just absorb way too much heat, and the chamber doesn't heat up enough. So I got two of those, and they're really light. Then, I bought a bunch of manganese dioxide, 500 grams. This is used as a pottery pigment. Um, so you might have it lying around your house, I don't know. I didn't, so I purchased some. This was only uh, $4.00. But um, it's really useful because you just mix this with some aluminum powder and it creates an extremely exothermic thermite reaction. You can actually get manganese metal from this. So um, I did do a video on how to extract manganese, but it wasn't very pure. Um, so I got some more of this stuff and I'm going to be redoing the video. Um, and I don't want to go ahead and extract it from batteries like I did in that other video. I'm just going to use this stuff from the pottery. The other thing I got was titanium dioxide. Once again, I grabbed 500 grams. This was a bit more expensive, $12, but titanium dioxide is used as a white pigment. And it's super useful um, because this, similarly to the manganese dioxide, can be mixed in with a bit of aluminum powder and creates a thermite. And we should be able to extract titanium metal from this. So those things I'm going to be saving for um, extractions. Anyhow, so that's what I got there. Now... Here is just a bunch of 240 volt cable, which we'll be able to use in all sorts of different wiring and stuff for my higher um, current things, um, like my arc furnace. So I grabbed a bunch of that, there's huge amounts of it. Um, and anyhow, so now let's take a look at my periodic table, which is right here behind me. Okay, so this is what it looks like so far. Now, lots of things I have not put in ampule, but I have created like hydrogen, I have hydrogen, helium, those things are easy to obtain. I just haven't put them in. So you can see I have a fair amount here, and not all of them are labeled. So um, anyhow, you can see basically what I have. And then I have three here which I haven't put in uh, little things here yet. Um, and that would be uh, boron, sodium, and uh, ampule of argon. So all these things I haven't actually shown a video on how to extract them from household materials yet. Um, but those will be coming in the future, and lots of them I haven't labeled. So that's kind of why I've been holding back on uh, showing you guys <laughs> my periodic table because it's not doing too well yet, and I do have a lot more samples than this. But uh, that's fine because um, in the future I'll be able to label everything properly, get all the other ones I already have on here, and finish it off. So um, anyhow, uh, I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so sorry I had to cut out there. My uh, mom came in my room for some reason. Uh, needed something. Anyhow, so that's basically the end of the video. Uh, that's an update. Now, I am, I'm almost at 100 subscribers. Um, so I don't know what one of you, uh, you guys wanted a uh, 100 subscriber video. I don't know what to do for it. I'm trying to think of stuff, but I don't know. So if you guys want to post su suggestions in the comments, um, that would be wonderful. But um, yeah, I'll see if I do any of the suggestions if you guys post any. Um, but I'll definitely try to think of something for a 100 subscriber uh, special. Um, so anyhow, uh, I'll try to do update videos on my periodic table periodically. Um, but anyhow, so that's basically all the stuff I got. And I should be able to extract lots of different things from this stuff and use it all. So uh, look for it in future videos. Anyhow, okay, hope you guys enjoyed. Bye.